Welcome fans to another episode of The Spread. I'm your host, Jim Sella, in studio with Jay Dash. Nobody else is here today. Just me and you talking some fantasy football. So pretty much just you talking football and me commenting. Believe it. And we're doing value picks for rounds 9 and 10 in 12-team leagues, PPR. And if you want to win, you got to draft well, and that includes the late rounds because that's where you get all the steals. That's how I made it to the I mean, the that's how you win. It's the late rounds, definitely, that you win. All day. If you're going to win by the draft, usually you don't even win by the draft. you got to make claims <clears throat> all season long. you got to stay with it. Claim it up. But we're going to start with a guy that many people may not know, and that is a wide receiver from the New York Giants, and he is going at average draft position 100 Point three, and that is Sterling Shepard. They have Odell Beckham Jr. out there, obviously. Right now, he's going as a top three pick. I don't know if I'd draft him that high. It, it's hard to say. I hate drafting wide receivers that high unless they are completely elite. No, Odell Beckham Jr. I mean, he's as close to elite as you can get almost. But he has his down games, too. And some of that's Eli Manning as well. Eli Manning isn't Garbage. the best. <laughs> well, I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> but he isn't the best quarterback ever. And we've seen Victor Cruz. He couldn't do it last season. So his he's pretty beat. much out. They got rid of uh, Reuben Randall. I think he went to the Philadelphia Eagles. So they're gone. Sterling Shepard, they're sent, talking a lot of good things, just like you said about Sammy Coates making plays in camp. The same thing is being said about Sterling Shepard. And this looks like he could be – the steal of this draft, really, if he steps up. I mean, he's already considered the number two receiver out there, and we've seen Eli Manning make two receivers good before, so it's not impossible. And Sterling Shepard, it's nothing but praise on this guy right now. He's making all the plays they're saying. So Sterling Shepard looks like he could definitely be a steal in round nine. Rookie wide receivers is the one position rookies really scare me. Because it's tough for a wide receiver to really get acclimated and have a consistently big year their whole rookie year. They'll have big games. So, uh, you know, I'm not afraid to take them if I need certain matchups or, or whatnot. But to rely on somebody, you know, he's their number two receiver. To rely on him as maybe my number three or my flex player every week, I don't know. But I, I've never won, so I don't. Oh, well, there have been receivers, advice, man, uh, especially a couple of years ago, I remember. There was a ton of receivers that had big seasons. I forget, maybe, I don't think it was last year. I think it was the year before. But, I mean, there are receivers that step up here and there. And I think if, if it's going to be any rookie receiver this season, uh, Sterling Shepard is that guy. Is he related to Starling Marte? Uh, no, you always go by first names. It, 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 usually you have to <laughs> have the same last name. Hey, you never know. And it's not even the same first name anyways. It's close, though. It's close. All right, let's go with the next one, a guy we talked about in our last segment, and that is Terrell Josh, Pryor? No, Josh oh. Gordon for Cleveland. Man, I'm really campaigning for Pryor. Why can't we talk about him? He is going at average draft position 101.3, and that Ooh. is Josh Gordon, not Terrell Pryor. Oh. And... It really, I mean, you said it all in the last segment. You talked Cleveland, so anybody that listened to that segment, uh, they got a gist of what's going on here. But they have Barnage out there. They have another receiver as well, a young guy, Corey Coleman, who they believe is going to step up and have a good season for them. But really, it all RG3. comes three. It, it all comes down to RG three. Yes, it, I mean, if he plays like he did his last season there in Washington when he was the starter, Courage. yeah, you're gonna probably get nothing out of anyone you might have see someone like barnage step up and have what about a good duke season. johnson isn't that their running back yeah he's a beast he I, I like that guy yeah definitely where i see him drafted it isn't a bad draft position where did i see him at he's going at average draft position 57 oh, so yeah. i mean yeah he he's being drafted pretty high and i mean it's it's scary to take a chance on guys like that but in the end when things ain't working out with RG3, Duke Johnson's the guy that's going to get all the passes out of the backfield and everything. Like I said, maybe Barnage steps up and has a good season if RG3 isn't that good. But Josh Gordon's a guy that got it done with a lot of bad quarterbacks as well. And if he can step up and be even close to the receiver he was before he missed, what, all of last season? He yeah. might even miss some of the season before that as well. <laughs> yeah. I think he might but be suspended four games, maybe. Josh Gordon is an elite talent. Now, we'll have to see if it, he still is an elite talent, but at this average draft position, I'm going to take the chance on him. This is where you want to take the chance on those high upside guys. 
bleed at. And this guy can go downfield. So that's the thing that makes bad quarterbacks good when he plays. They don't necessarily have to be an accurate passer for him to be good and for them to succeed a little bit. They just got to be able to throw the ball further than the defense can get it and let Josh Gordon run underneath of it. And RG3 can do that. I'm hearing that McCown might get traded to the Cowboys, so it, it's RG3 or bust pretty much there as far as quarterback goes. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me really. I I, yeah, he, I would do the same thing if I were them. He I, at least is young and has potential, whereas McCown's old and washed up. Yeah, well, I think if McCown's there or not, it's RG3 or bust. But let's move on here. Do average draft position 110.8, and we're going to talk another tight end here. Tight end number 12 on the list, and that is Antonio Gates. He mm. he's the, the big only... man's behind his uh, protege. They have another tight end, that a young tight end out there that they think that can fill Ladarius Green's role. I think his name's Hunter Henry, something like that. Hardcore Henry. That was a good movie. But Antonio Gates, there. It looks like he's going to be able to step in from the beginning of this season. Last time, last year, he missed the first four games of the season. Doing them drugs with Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, and he stepped. The first game back, he stepped up and had a huge game, and it looked like he was going to have a big season. And then after that, I mean, first of all, when Keenan Allen went down, that hurts your entire offense. Believe it. And that hurt their run game as well. It hurt Danny Woodhead as well. Yeah. It hurt their whole offense really. Poor and they had back. more injuries than that too. It wasn't just him. There was. A a ton of injuries on San Diego last season, but they do need to get better play out of their offensive line. Eddie B likes Antonio Gates, and I said B this time, Eddie, so relax. But they also brought over Travis Benjamin as well, so I think that can help out the passing game as well. And I think, yeah. I mean, Phillip Rivers, they pass the ball all over the place out there, and Antonio Gates has always been a big part of that. I think he's going to step up and have a better season than he did last year. And if you missed out on one of the top tight ends, I mean, at tight end number 12 here, this is really the last starting tight end, they're saying, in a 12-team league. So I wouldn't mind that as my starting tight end if if you're going to miss out on one of the top tight ends and stack receivers and running backs or however you go at it. Believe it, I would definitely take Antonio Gates as my number one guy and then maybe just try to fill in here or there if there's a matchup I like better on a free agent. Or when he has his injury. Yeah, because... you. Know, in most leagues, teams are only having, you know, they have two tight ends on their roster or whatnot, but not everybody carries it all year long like that. They have one guy they know they're playing, and a lot of people will just carry the starter, and then if they need to, they make a move during the week because it's not like you can change anybody in-game anyway, which is my biggest beef with fantasy football. We're going to go with average draft position 111.5, and that is Baltimore wide receiver Steve Smith. Man. They're saying it's his last year. Well, look, man, this is what? Dude's knee is busted. This is round 10, man. Or his Achilles. I forget what it was. They brought over Mike Wallace. Yep. Another dude who's busted. He couldn't even pass the conditioning test Listen, getting Mike, into camp. Mike Wallace is a guy that they're only going to throw deep to pretty much. They're going to have to throw the ball to somebody when they pass. And Steve Smith, the guy that they're going to look at most, I would have to believe. They also got what's Brashard that, Perryman yeah, out there. Say, what's that and big I think young dude's name? I, I also think he's a sleeper pick he's at bumped. this point. But Steve again, Smith, though. man, going out his last season, we said it before, we were a little bit down on him. We always liked the guy, but we're down on him going into, what, two years ago maybe it was, and he blew up. And last season he came out and had a – he started as one of the top ten receivers through the first – I can't even remember how many games, five, six games, something like that. And then he had his injury, and really Joe Flacco went down as well, and Baltimore just went to crap at yeah, that point. Garbage. But – with Joe Flacco healthy, really, they don't have a guy that you're going to throw at a ton outside of Steve Smith. So this guy's going to get a ton of catches this season. He has to, as long as he stays healthy. The one thing that bothers me about Baltimore's passing game in general this season is they said that Flacco might not get a lot of work early because the knee is still maybe an issue. And, and these were all preliminary reports, so don't quote me on any of this. But Flacco might you know, miss some time early, and that'll hurt the passing game. And... I just hate Baltimore, but I love Steve Smith before he became a Raven. Flacco might miss some time, you're saying? Just in, like, camp early. And, I mean, uh. I think he's out there throwing now, but I think he's on a limited basis of what he's allowed to do still. Like, I, I don't think he's 100% cleared for full contact football yet. Yeah, like I said, though, I mean, with what they got out there, Mike Wallace isn't a guy that's going to get a ton of targets. For sure, garbage. Perryman, we still got to see what he can do. Garbage. <laughs> you think everybody <laughs> and everything is garbage, man. No, but, man. 
But I'm telling you, I think man. Terrell Pryor's good. When worst comes to worst out there in Baltimore, they're going to have to start throwing screens to Steve Smith. Screen it up. All right, right behind him is another quarterback, and that is quarterback number 12. Kirk Cousins. Derek Carr, uh, 111.8, man. And listen, if you're going to miss out on a quarterback, this is a guy you're going to want to target at this point in the draft because we've seen him. He took a step up last season. Amari Cooper was a big part of that, and they even – they they should get more chemistry together here over the off season. And I think he can take another step up. He's not going to turn into a Tom Brady or anything. But we've seen big games out of him last year. I think he just needs to get a little bit more consistent. And if you like, I said, if you pick a guy like Carson Palmer, you might want to take a Derek Carr too in case Palmer something happens to him or he doesn't have as big of a season as he did last year. Because I think Derek Carr is going to be one of those guys at least at the fringe starting quarterback. You know what I mean? I've been hard on Derek Carr his whole career. I've called him garbage. I said his brother was better than he was, and it's clearly not true. He's obviously way better than David Carr. Uh, Derek's got a (laughs) bigger arm, a stronger arm. He's more accurate. He's good at reading a defense. I mean, for a young guy. I'm not coming out and saying he's a top-two quarterback or anything right here. But I think he's definitely a guy with Amari Cooper. If you end up at the end of your draft, you know, if you're drafting 10th or even 12th in a deeper league, this could be the back end of your stackable quarterback receiver combo. Honestly, this could be one of the last good pairings that if you don't get one of the top guys. Well, you got to go Derek high Carter with Amari Cooper. That's the problem. You got to try to get Cooper high, and then maybe you just wait for Derek Carr later, and you can try to build up, you know, running back or wide receiver. Or tight well, end I tell you what, that. if Derek Carr is your first quarterback take, and there's a guy going a, a lot later in this draft that average draft position. 156.8, and that is Matt Ryan, man. In ah, See, I have always got burned by Atlanta in everything. Fantasy, betting, everything about <laughs> Matt. Yeah. yeah. See, for somebody else, great idea. For me, no thank you. But look, he's quarterback number 20 on the list right now, and we've seen an elite season out of Matt Ryan. Now, it, it didn't come last year, but he still looked pretty good last year. Not starter-worthy every week, but... He can, I mean, they brought over Muhammad Sanu, and while that doesn't sound like a huge addition from what Roddy White gave Roddy them White last was season. Bad last year. Yeah, I mean, it is an upgrade. And the, actually, I'm hearing a lot of good things about Muhammad Sanu. And it, the big question about him is his hands because he drops a lot of passes, but he has the talent to make big plays. And alongside Julio Jones out there, we've seen Devontae Freeman step up last season. I still got questions about him. But Matt Ryan, I mean, he was a top five considered a top five quarterback in fantasy at one point and he's dropped way down to quarterback number 20 I think you might be able to get some value out of him here what I don't even know what round that is 153 that would be round 13 somewhere there definitely take a chance on him there what do you think about Fitzpatrick any value coming this late into the Jets organization now well he's going at average draft position 193.3 and I don't think you can beat that yeah, hey, psh. that's definitely a guy I would look to sub in for a bye week or something, for show, or if your quarterback goes down. And there's always those guys that go late in the draft, man, that turn out to be top 10 quarterbacks. We've seen it happen with Carson Palmer. I've done it with Kurt Warner. I've actually done it with Carson Palmer in his, it was his, I don't think it was his rookie season. I think it was his second season when he really took a big step forward way back in the day. And I remember I won the championship that year because of Carson Palmer. I took him in like the... 12th round or something he ended up a top three quarterback garbage but yeah it happens all the time and really i mean ryan fitzpatrick could be that guy this season anybody else no that's it man we did five tired of talking to you i'm gonna go eat some dinner all right so we're not doing stillers yeah we'll do it why not Fans, follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Follow me on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. You can find all our segments both places. You can also find them on YouTube at youtube.com slash bet the spread. Just Google the spread. Uh, the pictures of some gross things will come up, so don't click images.